In my last video, I refused to acknowledge generational spaceships as a means to colonization, and here's why. For the purpose of this video, let's make a theoretical trip from Earth to the Alpha Centauri system, and say our ship can get there in a little under 1,000 years, about the speed in which Starship goes to Mars. Just addressing the moral problems with this, for one, people have to commit the rest of their lives to sitting on a ship. They also have to bring other generations into the world with the only purpose to sit and wait on the ship, reproduce, then die. If we were to go all the way to the Proxima Centauri system, we would need to do this cycle 14 times. That's potentially thousands of people committing their lives to this mission. Humans also need stimulation. I get bored just sitting in math class for 50 minutes, when not a lifetime of sitting on a ship drifting through a sea of blackness. With this much time, there's bound to be conflict. There might even be a generation that uprises in protest, that compromises the mission. Going more into these human-centered problems, every new generation must be educated in the mechanics of the ship, science, math, and knowledge needed when they reach Proxima Centauri. To keep these people alive, we'll need oxygen, water, and food. An average human consumes 35 tons worth of food in their lifetime, and about 16,000 gallons of water. With enough space, you can grow the food, whether it be crops or animals, but that requires energy. And that goes into the engineering challenges, which we'll get into in a moment. As for the water, well, you can recycle a lot of it, but even the International Space Station can only recycle 98%. If you were to have, say, 300 people on the ship that all needed 16,000 gallons of water, assuming you just kept the population the same through the 14 generations, that's 67.2 million gallons. 2% of that is 1.3 million gallons that would be lost. So you'd either need to bring a large reserve of water or stop at asteroids and comets along the way to refuel. All this brings us into the engineering challenges. Perhaps you found a way to freeze humans, like in Space Odyssey 2001, and most of the human factors are ruled out. Even then, you still need a ship that produces enough power. And it can't be from solar panels because you'll be too distant from any stars when you're making the crossing. Most likely, the rocket will run off nuclear fission, which will use a lot of water for cooling, produce radiation, and require heavy elements such as uranium, which would not only need to be found, but also stored in large quantities. Of course, this will all take up a massive amount of room, which means you need a massive rocket. Assuming this mission is to colonize a planet in the Alpha Centauri system, you would also need to bring everything needed to colonize, and fuel. For fuel, we'd have to do something special. If we used modern rocket fuel, we'd never leave Earth, and the tanks would need to be the size of a lake. If we took advantage of the fission reactors, we could use nuclear thermal propulsion, NTP, which is just a fancy name for heating up hydrogen and expelling it into space at a high velocity, which creates thrust. Hydrogen is the lightest element, and can be heated up to extreme temperatures, making it much more efficient though most likely we would still need a refill somewhere along the way. Taking all this into account, people say we can build this ship smaller than the Burj Khalifa. This may be true if the people sleep through the whole thing, but if you're going to have 300 people awake at any given moment and don't want them going insane, I'm banking you're going to need a lot more room than that. The construction of this would likely take place in space instead of building it on the ground. Since we don't plan on going home, we'll never need to launch the rocket. It just has to land. Really, the whole thing doesn't need a land either. There could just be a small lander. This makes it a bit more plausible, but still expensive. The International Space Station cost over $150 billion to build, and only supports a crew of seven astronauts that aren't self-sustained. A ship big enough to support over 300 people would likely cost in the trillions. So I wouldn't say generational spaceships aren't possible, but they are a terrible idea. Eventually, we'll need to find a way to the Alpha Centauri system, but I think the research, engineering, and technology that would be needed for a generational ship could be applied elsewhere to develop extremely efficient thrust or warp drive instead that gets us there faster. I'm sure I missed a few things, so if you want, you can add them as a comment and I'll pin them. But for now, that's it for me, so I'll see you guys in the next video.